So I don't know if, if anybody wants me to go over what we went over last week. I'm going to completely redo everything we talked about last week, but put it in, in a much better terms that everybody's going to be able to more easily understand as to what's going on in the courtroom and what your role is and how the, the importance of, uh, of, a, of status over name and those kind of things. But uh, what I was going to start with, and I'm almost confusing myself a little bit right now. Um, yeah. Okay, the name. We're not even going to start with the whole man stuff, like the God created me, like blah, blah, blah. We've all heard it ad nauseum, the whole nine yards. What we know is we're stuck with a name that we're trying to deal with. We're trying to figure out what it is. So over tonight, it's, you know what, where's my black marker? Sorry, because I don't know if red's all that visible. Blue, no. I wrote on the board with permanent marker the other day. What's that? That's a green one. Anyways, okay, well, we'll do it in blue then. Okay, we got the, we got the name. Birth certificate name. Right. So, last week I'd kind of referred to it as a presumption of law, which it really is. It's, it's a presumption. I, I, I came to call it that, but for everybody else's purposes, because people understand it better. Can I turn it on? Oh, the red light yep, on. it's definitely on. For our purposes, instead, we're going we're gonna to go back to a common phrase everybody always heard, and that's the legal person. Because more people understand what a legal person is, I'm guessing, right? So we all know that this is a legal person, and where did it come from? Because everybody wants to go into court and they want to make these arguments about, I'm a man and I can do whatever I want. I'm a man and I've got God-given rights and this and that and the whole nine yards. And despite the fact that yes is true, um, like uh, in, even in a courtroom in, in Canada, in all these summary convictions courts, God law, God's law is supreme. And you can start to bring God's law into the courtroom, but you don't need to because that's not what's going on in the courtroom at all. It's kind of an irrelevant and moot point. Like the government knows you have God-given rights. It's the first line of the Charter and Rights and Freedoms, you know? It's, it's not really a question that's disputed, and that's not, what, that's not what's going on in the courtroom. We all know that because it's a hearing for this entity right here. Now, where did this entity come from? Your mother and father, when you were born, decided that they were going to grant you something, and that was to fill out a particular live birth and apply for the government, basically, where then you both entered into an agreement that created a trust. So that's why no one owns title to the name because it's kind of a it's it's kind of a, a, a legal person it was created by more than one party and those all those parties have a function and a role in that so no one really owns title to it but it's not about title and it's like what I explained to you earlier about cars it doesn't matter who's got the title to it titles even irrelevant it's who owns all the equity in that property because equity is king and that is that couldn't be a more true statement you own the equity it's yours you control it period it's the same as assuming liability, right? It's kind of like the same principle. If I'm assuming all liability for somebody else's actions, then I'm going to make sure that they're not doing anything that's going to get me in trouble. So it's kind of the same principle. Um, so the legal person is created. Now, the legal person is a corporation. It is. That's what corporations are. That's what corporate law is. A corporation is created in a trust agreement. It's a security agreement. Uh, that's going right back to the, 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 the highest law, which is trust law, period, that the Romans adapted to create corporations. And then that's been adapted to, to do what we're doing here. Hey, come on in. So before we get into more about this, let's see if you guys can get where I'm going with uh, corporate structure. It seems to me that it's a lot easier for people to understand corporate structure. I'll just pause for a sec. I'm a business person, I understand corporations better than anything. And people don't understand corporate structure and that would help them when they walk into a courtroom because really what's going on there is nothing more than say a hearing for a corporation, a formal hearing. Because corporations don't do anything without formal hearings where there's a record that's kept, right? Like the minutes book of your, of your corporation. That's what's going on there. End of story. So you're not showing up as a legal person. You're showing up because a hearing is being conducted for a legal person that you have an interest in. And there's roles to be played there and you're not, you're not doing your proper role and you're getting suckered into something else and you're taking all liability for everything that's going on there. 
So that is true. So corporations, what's going on when somebody creates a corporation? Um, let's start with, I don't know, what's the best corporation everybody's familiar with? What, Microsoft, Bill Gates? Doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't know who actually owns McDonald's. We'll just say, yeah, we'll stick with Microsoft because everybody knows who Bill Gates is. Ray Kroc? McDonald's, Ray Kroc, is that what you're going to say or no? Could be. Okay. Anyways, I'm going to go with Bill Gates. So Bill Gates is up here. Now Bill Gates has a bunch of employees for his company. What's the third part of a corporation? Shareholders. So you're going to get the crash course in this. It's going to make sense, and there's no reason to even explain most of this kind of stuff. Yes. Well. Yes, because Microsoft is actually, this unit is what creates, instead of Dean Clifford now, we've got Microsoft. So that's where I was going to this. So now this trust arrangement has formed Microsoft. And it's a trust agreement, right? So this is, this is trust law now. So we got Bill Gates, and technically, for lack of any kind of a better word, what is Bill Gates' role in that corporation? CEO. Administrator. Administrator, president, CEO, chief software director. director. Yeah, director is a good one. I like that one, but I like president, CEO better, depending on what kind of a corporation I'm dealing with. So let's just call him the director. All right. And the shareholders, which are down here, are the people that basically bought stocks in the company, right? So they gave something to Microsoft, and they're expecting to get something back in the way of dividends. What does that sound an awful lot like? Investors. Investors, but more so? Suckers. There you go. Your mother and father were the grantors of the trust that was created. And they put, because you were still a child, your share of the Commonwealth into an organization with the expectation that you're going to benefit from this. And so as soon as you turn the age of majority, you become the grantor and beneficiary. Yeah. They stay the grantor and ultimately the beneficiary until you, get, uh, uh, until you take it over. I'm not really sure who that is. Oh, oh not a problem? <laughs> OK. Now, the employees over here, uh, I'm going I'm to leave them called employees. But if we've already got now the director and the beneficiaries, who's the only thing that's left? Trustee. Trustees. Richard Rez. What's that? Where's the res and the um, I guess when you're buying stocks and you're, there's probably an agreement when you're buying the stocks, that'd be the corpus. Um, there doesn't always have to be a corpus. It's always, it can be assumed or presumed, or it could be up to the director to set policy, which would be the direction that the, the organization the is going to go policy into. And the policy. Corpus. So you got policy makers. There you go. So Bill Gates up here, who is a director, he creates policy. That isn't the policy of Microsoft. It might not be him directly. You could actually instead call it, because obviously it's not just him. He also has a GA board of directors. Everybody knows corporations have board of directors that set policy. These people send orders down to the employees. This is the policy of the corporation. This is our rules. This is how we conduct business. This is your job. This is what you do. The employees do what they're supposed to be doing, directed by up top. And their sole purpose in carrying out that function is to make money for those people. These people aren't happy because these guys aren't doing their job. 
or maybe these guys aren't setting policy properly. Who's the only person that can remove board directors from the board? The shareholders. The shareholders. Now we're going back that way again. That's how corporations work, that's how a trust works, and that's exactly what's going on with your legal person. But you don't know who you are. Most people are only acting as this. We don't, we, we're all that. There's no question there. The only problem is most people get suckered into acting in the capacity of one of these guys. Usually by getting a driver's license, uh, by getting a SIN number, Anytime you perform a function of government, you're acting as an employee or a trustee because you're performing a function of government. Yes? So originally the board of directors, the policy makers and everything would be your parents? Nope. No. They, they mysteriously haven't shown up or ever set policy or... Um, Nope. No. Nope. You're, you're actually the board of director and the beneficiary. Oh, yeah. No, when you take over it, I'm talking about when it's originally made. Did so, you the question about the trust? That, 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 never, that would never change. Based, <coughs> based on this model, now that we understand the power structure, how, how would you get a director? By hiring him. If you are this guy right down here and you are the sole beneficiary, where does the director come from? You have to appoint him. You appoint him. Why? Because you're the... Because you own all the equity. You're, you're the one that appoints directors. You can appoint somebody else. I'm three or four people's directors right now. In the event they go to jail, I show up. And I'm their director in court now. Done it. They don't like it. They try to say you can't speak. Well, excuse me, I set policy. You're the public servant here. You obey policy. And I'm telling you that your statu statutes are not being enforced against this legal person because you are directly affecting that guy. And my job is to protect his investment. You've heard of people walking into courts and firing judges before? It's happened. They don't know why, though. I've heard of that before. And the judge just gets up and walks out. You're a purple. You're. For that case, or does he come back? Well, it's just okay. Every time. Okay, so everybody understands this now. We'll get into that, right? I got my own theory on this. Me and a couple of buddies, we disagree on a few points, but you know what? That, that comes down to that whole story of dinner again. Right? We really don't know what government's doing behind the scenes. We can speculate all we want on what's really going on, what they're doing, and, uh, and everything else, but it's just like five of us being out for dinner, and we haven't discussed who's paying the bill yet. And we can presume all we want what's going on, but all we can really do is just give our own position. Experiment, see what works. Well, no, but if, if everybody at the dinner table has a different presumption as to who's paying, yeah. if you're the first one to speak up and say, well, I'm paying for my own bill, you don't even give a shit about the rest of them. Yeah. Now it's been, very, it's been made very clear you're paying for your own bill, so you're not part of all of that anymore now, right? That, that presumption's been removed. You could say, well, how, how are we going to pay the bill? You know, there's, all that's what, there's a million ways to address anything that's going on in the courtroom. There's some real fun ones. Yes. How did you get appointed? Director? As director. Appointment. You appoint a director. I just did it right now. Shareholder debts in jail. Yep. How does he appoint you as? I have power of attorney for people. And then I appoint myself don't you director. Have to officially have that power? No. Don't you? It can be verbal. Doesn't he have to appoint you? Are they going to argue with you? Don't they operate in presumptions? So you can do the same. Except you can back up your presumption. Right? Do you think they're going to challenge you? Are you, chal are you challenging my claim that I'm the director of that legal person? Are you actually challenging? How many people challenge Bill Gates when he walks into work every day? You know, dude, I don't think you're the president and CEO anymore. Oh, really? 